The alveolar arterial oxygen gradient tells us the difference between oxygen in the alveoli and in arterial blood. This gradient helps us figure out if hypoxemia is due to ventilation perfusion mismatch, diffusion issues, shunting, or hypoventilation. This presentation is for educational purposes only. The alveolar arterial, AA gradient, measures the difference between alveolar oxygen, PaO2, and arterial oxygen, PaO2. It indicates how efficiently oxygen moves from the alveoli into the blood, providing insight into gas exchange efficiency. The alveolar arterial oxygen gradient is calculated by subtracting the arterial oxygen pressure from the alveolar oxygen pressure, and it reflects how efficiently oxygen moves from the air sacs into the bloodstream. To interpret it, you first determine the normal expected value based on age, then obtain arterial oxygen and carbon dioxide levels from an arterial blood gas sample, use these values to compute alveolar oxygen pressure, then subtract the arterial oxygen pressure from the alveolar oxygen pressure to find the gradient. The alveolar arterial oxygen gradient is used clinically to differentiate causes of hypoxemia by assessing the efficiency of oxygen transfer from alveoli into the pulmonary circulation. A normal gradient indicates that the lung's ability to move oxygen across the alveolar capillary membrane is preserved, and low oxygen levels are usually due to hypoventilation, or low inspired oxygen tension, such as in drug-induced respiratory depression, neuromuscular weakness, or high-altitude exposure. An elevated gradient signifies impaired oxygen diffusion or disrupted ventilation perfusion balance, commonly seen in conditions such as pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary embolism, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, atelectasis, intracardiac right-to-left shunting, or interstitial lung disease where structural or functional abnormalities hinder oxygen equilibration between alveolar gas and arterial blood. In hypoventilation, the lungs are structurally intact, so the mechanism of alveolar gas exchange remains normal even though ventilation is reduced, both the alveolar oxygen level and the arterial oxygen level decline proportionately because the primary problem is insufficient fresh air reaching the alveoli, not a defect in the alveolar capillary interface. Since oxygen transfer capacity is preserved, the difference between alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen does not increase, resulting in a normal alveolar arterial gradient despite the presence of low oxygen levels. When the lung parenchyma, or pulmonary vasculature, is diseased, the diffusion of oxygen across the alveolar capillary membrane becomes impaired, causing arterial oxygen tension to fall disproportionately compared with alveolar oxygen tension. In this situation, the alveoli may retain normal or near-normal oxygen concentrations, yet the blood exiting the pulmonary capillaries remains inadequately oxygenated due to impaired gas transfer or ventilation perfusion inequality. This mismatch between preserved alveolar oxygen levels and reduced arterial oxygen levels increases the gradient between alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen, resulting in an elevated alveolar arterial oxygen gradient. Simply put, there is a greater drop in arterial oxygen compared to alveolar oxygen, resulting in increased gradient. The normal AA gradient for a young, healthy adult is approximately 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury, and it gradually increases with age due to subtle declines in pulmonary elastic recoil and ventilation perfusion matching. A practical way to estimate the expected value is by using a formula in which the individual's age is divided by 4, and 4 is added to the result. Some references use an alternate calculation in which the individual's age plus 10 is divided by 4 but both methods provide a reasonable estimate of the normal range for gas transfer efficiency in the lungs. O summarize, a normal alveolar to arterial oxygen gradient indicates that the structure of the lungs and the alveolar capillary membrane are functioning properly, so hypoxemia in this setting is usually caused by reduced ventilation or reduced inspired oxygen rather than a defect in gas transfer whereas a high alveolar to arterial oxygen gradient reflects impaired movement of oxygen from the alveoli into the blood due to conditions such as pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary edema, pulmonary embolism, interstitial fibrosis, atelectasis, or severe emphysema, all of which disrupt oxygen diffusion or create ventilation, perfusion imbalance, and result in poorly oxygenated arterial blood despite the alveoli often containing adequate oxygen. 
A 33-year-old woman with acute chest pain and dyspnea has low arterial oxygen, low carbon dioxide, and a markedly elevated alveolar arterial oxygen gradient, which together indicate impaired pulmonary gas exchange rather than a problem with ventilation or inspired oxygen. The combination of hypoxemia, respiratory alkalosis, and a widened alveolar arterial oxygen gradient is characteristic of ventilation perfusion mismatch, making pulmonary embolism the most likely diagnosis. This pattern reflects well-ventilated but poorly perfused lung regions, which prevents adequate oxygen transfer into the blood and produces the elevated gradient seen on arterial blood gas testing. This highlights the clinical application of the AA gradient. Another practice question involves a 52-year-old man with confusion and shallow breathing. His ABG shows a normal AAA gradient, suggesting hypoventilation due to opioid use, not intrinsic lung disease. This emphasizes the diagnostic value of the gradient. Clinical Pearl When interpreting hypoxemia, a normal alveolar arterial oxygen gradient indicates that the alveolar capillary interface is functioning properly and that the problem is reduced ventilation or reduced inspired oxygen rather than intrinsic lung disease whereas an elevated gradient signifies impaired pulmonary gas transfer and should prompt consideration of ventilation perfusion mismatch, pulmonary shunting, or diffusion limitation. For more educational content, like, share, and subscribe to Quick IM with Dr. Aid. Your support helps us create even more valuable content for you.